Oh, good. This way I can listen to it. Okay. Um, okay. So the, the question, what did the mental health support that I provided or that we adhere tomorrow look like? Okay. I'm sorry. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so when I first called in, the support um, was really sympathizing with what I was going through instead of trying to, um, you know, talk it down or make it seem like, um, you know, it, it wasn't as serious as it was um, and not, you know, guilting me in any way, just um, sympathizing with the pain that I was experiencing at the time. Um, and then also just continually, you know, mentioning there's so much stuff that can be done um, because at the time I really felt like that was it. It was never going to get any better than it was. I felt like I had tried everything people had brought in front of me. Um, and so then when I came in um, talking through kind of the, the science or, you know, the actuality of what depression and, and what, you know, suicidal ideations can come to and just talking me through all of that and making me realize, you know, just like a cancer is a serious illness that needs to be treated and dealt with or else it can kill someone. Depression is also very similar to that. It is something that if unchecked, it can kill someone. Um, and so just like cancer can be treated through many different options, I did have a lot of options to treat my depression. Um, and there's, you know, so many other resources that I had no idea about. I mean, I had a doctor, a counselor, I was on medication. I mean, I was doing everything that people kind of suggested to me to do for my depression, but I didn't know there was resources like, you know, here tomorrow where I can have someone help walk me through that because, in this state, I'm so confused. I forget things so easily. So even basic things like keeping track or, you know, having set people to check in with me. Um, I didn't know that that was an option for me to have. I didn't know that that help and support was out there. Um, and knowing that I have like you on my side, you know, there for me fighting with me um, to get through this, it gave me a lot more um, assurance and a lot more will to keep trying to keep, um, you know, uh, doing what I need to do to try to get better and reaching out to people and, you know, leaning on them. And so it really helped me in that, um, that sense to understand better what I was going through and how I could get through it. That's awesome. That's so it's, it's amazing to do the work that we do, but then to hear it from our friends. So, mm -hmm. man, I'm just, I'm so fortunate that we get to do this. So one, one of the other questions is, how did our friend find hope? And, and I want to let you just answer that, how you feel. Okay. Um, I think where I found hope was I've always really struggled to ask for myself. That's not ever something that's come easy to me. Um, not even from my parents or the people closest to me. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons it has, my depression has gotten as bad as it has. But when I met you and, you know, you were so genuinely in willing to do whatever you needed to do to help me get through it, whether that was, you know, talking daily, talking weekly, whatever it was just to help me get through it and to experience that from someone that didn't know me, you know, had no reason to reach out to me that you were willing to do that. Um, you know, I, I did kind of lose a little bit of faith in humanity after everything I had seen and it just kind of helped to you know, be something tangible to restore that, that faith that, you know, there are people out here, um, like me that want to help other people, you know, and, and, you know, that's something that I want to continue to do. And, um, and so that, that really just gave me hope was just seeing, you know, your, you, and then obviously I know you have other people that work alongside you, um, that are willing to, literally, you know, spend their lives just trying to 
help out and, um, you know, and, and actually be there for someone that they don't even know, um, really gave me hope. Like if they're, if they're willing to put in all this time to help me, then I think that's for a reason. Like there's, there's something to be helped. There's, um, you know, there's hope that I can be helped. You know, doctors don't typically spend hours and hours treating patients that they know will never make it. You know, that's a different conversation that they, a different route that they have to take. You know, when doctors are saying, let's try this treatment, let's do this, let's go here. I know that's because that there's hope or a strong possibility that with those things, healing will come. That's awesome. Absolutely. Well, you and many others, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. It's an honor. And uh, the success stories, I remember just speaking to you and I'm like, she gets it. She, I understand where your heart is. Like when you say, um, you know, people are starving, like, do you even know what that means really? Mm -hmm. And I was like, she's got a heart that people don't understand. It was just, it was beautiful. So what was the plan that you had? Um, if you go back to that night, you were talking about the family was at the beach and mm -hmm. And if I say this wrong, please correct me. You felt at peace with your decision to go buy a gun and end it. Mm, yes. Um, so what was your plan and how did it change the situation by us meeting? So, um, yeah, I, I was, um, I was at the beach and everyone was really happy and, um, I just felt so, removed from it all, um, and distant. And I remember thinking, um, I was standing in the ocean thinking, and it just kept coming to my head. Like, um, you know, people say, you know, like pro-choice, you know, it's the woman's body. They can do what they want. And I said, I just started thinking if it's my body, why can't I kill myself? Why do people want to stop me? Why do I have to hide that? That's what I want. If it's my body, why, why can't I just choose for myself? And then I started going home and it just occurred to me to just start looking into it and, and thinking of, you know, well, if I did decide to kill myself, how would I do it? And, you know, I don't, I don't want to fail. I don't want it to be, you know, a suicide attempt. If I, if I do it, I want to make sure that it's over and I, I get to be done. And then I, um, you know, I was looking up places where I could buy a gun in the local area. And because of my searches, all these suicide hotlines kept popping up in all these different places. And, you know, the tagline would be something like, there's hope, or, you know, there's, you know, a better tomorrow or things like that. And I just ignored it. But as I was driving, I, I started thinking, hope, like it sounded so absurd that there could be hope because I felt that I was trying to hold out for hope for so long um and it it honestly like it made me angry like to see all these things that said there's hope and I kind of called out of anger like to say how can you put that out there that there's hope because it was the most absurd and insulting thing at the moment to think that there was hope. And I did, I didn't call to be talked out of it. I called kind of to just almost be angry with them that they would say that there was hope. Um, and so I called and um, the second the person asked me like if I was okay, I just kind of broke down and um, was that me or was that the um that was lifeline that was, that was the lifeline yeah okay and I just kind of broke down and um you know she's you know I told her you know what I was planning on doing and then she put me in contact with you and um the fact that you said I'm driving I want to pull over and give you my full attention hold on um even though there was difficulty with our communication at first with you know 
the the signal and everything the fact that you were so determined to make sure that you know I was okay that you would not be distracted by anything that you were giving me my full attention um it just it really just kind of shocked me and um and then when you you know because I could tell like you were so so invested already in in my well-being when you asked me to come in and you were like you got to promise me you're not going to do anything I was like I mean this person has already invested so much um you know into my well-being and I could tell that you cared so much so I was like I I can't promise that to him unless unless I'm gonna do it you know that's just how I felt was if I say yes I'm not gonna hurt myself or yes I'm gonna come in tomorrow I have I have to and so you know it, it took me a while to answer but I was like you know if there is some sort of version of hope that I haven't seen yet I'll give it another shot. Um, and in the back of my head, I was kind of like, you yeah, know, that plan's there. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so that's, that's kind of how all that came to be. My, 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 you know, it's, it's, Ray, it's exhausting. I, I, let me reframe that. It's beautifully exhausting handling some of the calls that we get. Mm -hmm. But talking to you now as we went through it is um, kind of emotional. Um, but I'm so... I'm so proud. Um, I don't know, because you have to be so present in that moment. And I love it. Mm -hmm. And I don't really think about it that much. But like, as we're talking, and I'm remembering, I'm driving home from South Carolina. Uh, my heart is just feeling really full. Um, I'm, I'm so proud of you. Oh, man. What was the key to transformation? And I know it's still the process, but what, what was the key? Um, I think, you know, everyone in, in my life, like, you know, they have jobs and they have um, lots of other responsibilities to the point that they can't really, um, you know, they can't sit down and and go through things with me or, or whatever it is. And I always, you know, am worried about interfering with their work or their personal lives or anything. But, um, I guess the, the key for me was honestly, I did need someone to just kind of come alongside of me and be like, look, this is how you need to prioritize. You need to make, you know, rest a priority. You need to, okay, well, what are you doing for this aspect of your life? Or, okay, well, how can we move this around? And when you, you know, when I was in your office and you showed me a calendar and you were like, we can sit down and we're going to talk about, it doesn't matter what's going on these days. These days, you're going to take a break. You're going to rest. These days, you're going to work on this. And um, it just made me kind of feel like before all of that felt like it was on me and the pressure was a lot. And I just, I knew I just mentally and physically wasn't there to do what I needed to do to schedule or to think out, you know, how to take care of myself or even the willingness to take care of myself. Um, but then, you know, knowing that I would have someone like you on my side, you know, in my corner, helping to, you know, remind me that I need to make myself a priority and I need to make rest or healing or whatever it was in that moment, a priority. Um, it, it really, you know, kind of made me feel like this isn't, or even, you know, the term fighting, I'm fighting this. And you said, you know, you use that term, like it's only you to, to do the fighting and, you know, it, it's not, or it shouldn't be. And, um, and I feel like that, you know, you helped me kind of look at what I was going through, um, through a different lens um, and made it more, more normal, honestly, more like, you know, not that I was insignificant, but I wasn't alone. Um, and uh, 
and you know I, I just that whole experience of just feeling like okay I got someone on my side like I know if I need to I can reach out to you I know if I say hey I feel really exhausted I don't know what to do then you know you'll say okay well what do you have coming up this week well let's play it you know and and I know that you'll be there to to help me through that hmm. absolutely so she has, what happened in the words of our friend? Um, I'm not really sure what she means by this. So let me just leave that. So in the words of our friend, what happened? And I guess that's before, during, after. I want to leave that to what, where that takes you. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think... Uh what happened before would just be years of just kind of being broken by seeing things like, um, it, you know, obviously the, the human trafficking and drought and starvation, but even things like I was an EMT here and um, we had to take a kid from Shreveport to New Orleans, which is about a, a five and a half hour drive. And um, the three-year-old had severe burns all over their body they had been in a house fire where their grandma and two siblings had passed away. And the entire time he just screamed and writhed in pain. And I wasn't in the back, but I could hear him thrashing around, screaming out the entire time. Never did he just quiet down. He never got comfortable. He never could sleep. He just screamed and screamed. And I was driving up in the front with his mom and she spent most of the time complaining about how much noise he was making. And then when we got to the hospital in New Orleans, she was, it seemed to be almost bragging like, yeah, that house fire that killed those two kids and that old woman, that was my mom and children. You should follow me on Facebook. And I that just broke something in me after that out of everything that I've seen just that um that whole experience just really felt it just changed me that moment just changed how I looked at people um and then it just got darker and darker and um, you know, and then during I shared the experience and the thoughts that were going through my head. Um, and yeah, I just felt at peace. I just remember when I decided that I was definitely going to do it. I was going to go kill myself. The sky was pretty. I didn't feel angry or scared or sad or anything. I was just like, it was like I could breathe for the first time. I could just breathe and just, I was so Hold on, Ray, hold on one second, please. Let me. Okay. Hello, Jeff Yeldon here tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. What time would you like to come in? Two PM would be fantastic. Okay. What's your name? Okay. All right. All right, Patsy. I'll be here. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ray, I sincerely apologize. That was in the okay. middle of... Um, so yeah, when she was at... You were at peace. You felt at yeah. peace. Yeah, I just felt really calm and, and happy and content that I wouldn't see another sunrise. Um, and then I think having to, you know, actually go through my actions with, you know, the person, um, on the, uh, the other line and, and you, you know, talking through my actions, I think that's when it really hit me what I was actually going to do, um, and the damage that it would cause to the people around me. I think that's when it actually became real, um, you know, cause planning it and, and, you know, going about my, my plan to, to do it. Um, 
you know, it was just me. It was just me. And it felt so, you know, it's only me that it's affecting. And it felt really calm and really peaceful. Um, and then when I actually brought in, you know, you and other people, then it, it became a lot more real and a lot more um, impactful on, you know, the lives that I could change by doing that. Um, and then after, you know, I've, I've just been a lot more focused on getting help and not just, you know, trying to be okay. Um, and making myself a priority and doing those things and, and getting rest and getting help. And, um, and a lot of that were, were things that we talked about, you know, as much as you want to help people, you have to take care of yourself first. Um, yeah, and, you, you matter. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Joe, um, Ray, sorry, Ray. Mr. Joe, can you, Ray, can you see uh, Mr. Joe? A little bit. Mr. Yeah. Joe Hi. is our benefactor that helps us do what we do. He lost his son to suicide and vowed that uh, you'll hear Ray's story. Um, all right, I don't want to cry. Oh. I'm interviewing Ray for you guys tomorrow night. And uh, right. Ray's a dear friend. And um, thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. What, what'd you do to thank your eye? Oh, fire. Oh, that was... Um... <laughs> Some ash from a firework got in it last night. Uh, I had a nail go through this eye mm. 24 years ago, and I can't see you. If I close my right eye, I can't see mm -hmm. you. So uh, it's amazing how the body comes back. So you'll be mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Right. Nice oh, meeting you. Oh, my again. gosh. Mr. Joe, thank you, sir. Goodbye. Bye bye. Oh, God. Ray, that's the, uh, that's the man that made all this happen. Um, he's a beautiful soul. And if you think about me willing to go above and beyond for you, and it's not just his money. Mm -hmm. his heart mm -hmm. uh ray you get it i'm sorry they came in a couple of big meetings today and uh i was just so impressed that he even took that time mm -hmm. um you matter uh you know we feel like we matter to him and um I'm just so privileged I get to do this every day. Mm -hmm. Like when they asked me to work today on a holiday, I'm sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just so blessed. I'm so proud of you. And all right. So your last words, you've just been a lot more focused on getting help and not just being okay. You're making mm -hmm. yourself more of a priority now. And a lot of that was due to us just talking. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And you and you sharing your story. I mean, you you dedicated a good portion of your life to to motivating and helping others and, and doing things like that. And, um, you know, the toll it took on you and how you weren't able to really effectively help others until you helped yourself. And that even now, as important as your work is, you say, OK, on these times I'm shutting off. I'm going to focus on me. Um, and uh you know, that, that really kind of showed me that, you know, if, if you can, can take the time to take care of yourself, then I can do that too. Um, so, yeah. Well, I, I'm going to emphasize that part to show my executive director that, Hey, I need a three day work week so I can do this work. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen, Ray, but no. <laughs> I'm so privileged to meet wonderful people like you and oh man. So the last question, what does all of that mean for our friend in your words? Um, At the end of the day, when all this is said and done, what does all um, this mean? 
bad. The only thing that's coming to my my head is that um, you guys saved my life. So I don't think I can say it any better than that. I think what it all means for me is that you guys saved my life. How close were you? A lot closer than I would ever want to be. Man. Ray, I'm so proud of you. Um, how how you and the family, how's you, mom and dad doing? They're doing good. Um, they are, um, they, they feel good about me going away for the four weeks. They feel good about it too. And um, they're trying to make sure that I don't have any stress or concerns or worries. Um, and, uh, and they're, they're doing really great at, you know, um, trusting me and, and they, they're working hard to find a good balance.